The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And hello, everybody. This is Derek Krebs. Thanks for joining us today on today's webinar for Prospero. I'll start for the first few minutes introducing myself and today's topic, but the bulk of the time we're going to be looking at the product, give you a nice little overview. I'll further acquaint you with other educational opportunities and sessions we have upcoming. So welcome one and all. Everybody is currently on mute. And if you have any questions, please take advantage of the question panel there to your right. And you have also the ability to minimize and maximize that go to webinar control panel by clicking on the little orange arrow to the left or the right to minimize or maximize it. We will be recording this session and emailing everybody that registered and or attended this live in session. We'll be getting a nice little follow up email with those links including a PowerPoint and some nice little extra uh, takeaways from today. And as I look at the audience, we have a very large group today, so thank you one and all for joining. And usually we have a mixed bag of attendees. Speaking of maybe three different audience members usually, we have some existing Prospero customers, so thank you for your business. Secondly, we have some people that we've been supporting end users for all the Microsoft legacy products like on the reporting side frx and manager porter and on the budgeting side microsoft forecaster so many of you might be considering the move and transition to prospero so there's going to be some great new features and abilities for that and i'll add more to that later and our third audience type is we have several partners that are selling and deploying general ledger packages that also sell prospero so thank you again all for joining so today's is a nice little overview session of Prospero. Let me begin by introducing myself, Derek Krebs. I'm a senior consultant with the MSX Group, and there's a little bit of my background on this slide. So I've been doing this close for 30 years. I a role as consultant, I like to emphasize, meaning I'm not the sales or marketing person. So really, I'm just going to bring the easy button as our theme today to your reporting and budgeting. Get rid of all the old manual and error prone ways and maybe also on the budgeting side many of you might be using excel still so that's where lo and behold prospero is going to be the all-in-one software solution for your reporting budgeting and forecasting and it has going to tons of bells and whistles and features i'll elaborate further on and our background we started close to 30 years ago as a private company about 150 employees called frx software and we had such great reporting and budgeting products that Microsoft acquired us. And we internally worked at Microsoft for about 15 years, helping deliver to the market those flagship products I introduced. But those are the old legacy products that have not been touched, meaning developed, no new feature, and are no longer supported. But our team still will be supporting the FRX and Forecaster products for years ahead, including Manager Porter on the consulting side. So we're here to serve you, but most have moved to Prospero. So we have a very easy transition of converting all your existing reports into Prospero, and that's going to be a huge differentiator. And that's going to be another theme here of how we stand ourselves apart from the rest in our product and features and functionalities. I'll continue just for a couple more slides, but then we're going to be jumping right into the application. So bear with me as we go through a few little overview for those new people that are not familiar with the Prospero application. All right, I'll probably gloss over a couple of these, like definitely reiterating the reporting and budgeting. And it's gonna be grabbing data from your general ledger. So let's say we have multiple general ledger companies, and how about we have a few different segments, like location, secondly department, maybe third account. So anything that you store in those general ledgers, we can then report and budget off of. And what's also great is, Prospero has its own data warehouse where you can include any non-general ledger data. And I'll give you maybe three or four examples later in today's overview, but maybe I'm going to bullet point. Maybe I want to budget down to the employee since that's such a large cost of my organization. Or maybe for reporting, I want to budget down or record actuals or report down to the product or salesperson or customer. So there's examples of maybe the data warehouse can report or budget down to non-general ledger labels. And as I continue to the next slide, there are some financial reports like income statements, balance sheets, cash flows. We have all the great interaction with a report, like drill down to the account and transaction detail, graphing ability, 
even drilling into the graph or changing the drill order, adding annotations or financial footnotes, as I just named about four or five interactive items that I'll show you in today's phone call. And then what we did all those Microsoft years was we learned great lessons and where those products were deficient, we added tons of new features. What was great about the Microsoft stack that we brought into Prospero was the user-friendly rows, columns, and trees. I work with several other competing products that are Excel add-ins. I hate those and despise them because we do not have the reusable building blocks of these rows, columns, trees, which means, hey, that one row there in blue, income statement, I could use for 20 different reports or even budget templates. And if I change my mind, like maybe add a new gross margin line or PPP loan item, I just make so in one spot. But in some of these Excel add-ins, I have to go to maybe 10 or 12 different files and usually update the reports manually. And I cannot inventory those. So usually I start with that in the product, just giving you a nice little overview of the row, column, or tree user-friendly nature. And as I continue the last couple of slides, Yep, just as important as reporting is, historically looking, uh, half of my life is working with companies on the budgeting side slash forecasting. We can obviously avoid Excel hell, being my first sort of thought there. It has a spreadsheet look and feel, meaning it's comfortable for you, let's say an accountant or even my end users like managers out in the field to easily enter their budget data and us collaborate like one version of the truth, avoid errors, manual pains. And then some of the bells and whistles on the budgeting side we'll see is detail screens like for HR and capital, line item detail, audit trail history, instant consolidations of the data, just to name a few. All right, and the last couple of slides I'll wrap up with and be sure to call your attention to through especially our email follow-up is we reflected on all of our clients, like me personally, these 30 years, probably about a thousand different customers that help in the reporting and budgeting. We really talked about, hey, what are the current challenges that most faced? And then there to the right, the Prospero solutions to those. Like item number one, I'll just gloss over a couple of these that, hey, the Microsoft stack that I'll mostly relate this to that people are coming off of. Yeah, product Prospero is under active deployment, tons of new features. I'll even in a short hour show you about 20 new features that were not in your world before. The item number four, the application, especially those I see a few on the phone call, we're using either Excel or Microsoft Forecaster, including maybe a secondary product for the reporting side. That was really double your work. You had to maintain those two systems, but now Prospero is one cohesive, simple tool that does all the reporting and budgeting. You do not have to import and export actuals and budgets to and from your general ledger system. It's all going to be self-contained in Prospero, including the data warehouse, to reiterate a couple of key words there. Now, item five. And one of the most painful things is, as I knew, add a new general ledger account each month, let's say a new expense account I just added. Well, I have to remember to go update usually all my different row or line sets for both my reporting and budgeting. But Prospero, we now made that foolproof and maintenance proof usually by using what we call summary accounts, like total revenue or total expense and expanding upon that. So I'll give you a nice little illustration of that new feature there. A report output. As I reflect on those years at Microsoft, when we went from FRX to Manager Porter, FRX had four or five output item features like Excel, PDF, printer, et cetera. But when people went to Manager Porter, Microsoft yanked those away. I felt very sorry for the client base. But yep, we brought those back, including added new report collections, the workspace and PDF. We'll see some of those output examples along with what I call the workspace or viewer that I'd recommend you leveraging due to a lot of features inside there that don't have in others. All right, and then now I'm gonna jump right inside the application. And those people that might have to maybe tail away from the phone call, I'm gonna probably also lay out on the table before I begin a couple of concluding remarks that I make. One would be, we do have a nice little one-on-one -on -one demonstration. Everybody is on mute where we're doing a large audience today. so. Take advantage of that question area. I'll reiterate for those that might have joined in the last couple of minutes. So you can definitely ping me at any time. There's my email, derek.krebs at msxgroup.com. I'll be sure to field any questions that you have if I don't capture them on today's phone call or if you'd like to request a one-on-one -on -one product demonstration. And secondly, how we stand apart among the rest 
a lot of reasons why, and there's a slide for that I'll pull up right after this one is, we give you a nice little free trial version of the software. We even can use your data, convert your reports and budgets, because I can't tell you how many customers, they went to different products, they came back a few years later, like Derek, this product failed that we went to a different competition. They overpromised. it was oversold, it was too difficult, time consuming. Those are common things I hear daily, but no, you can use Prosper, you can kick the tires, test drive it all free at no risk. So I'll personally invite those newer prospective customers and partners to take advantage of that. And maybe one last slide that obviously the font's small, but I'll be sure to email everybody that registered or attended this, is the differentiators. I'll just at least leave that up there just in case you're seeing a recording. And again, look for an email that has those in detail. And I'll probably in more conversational tone, I'll go through more and more of these great new differentiators or abilities of Prospero. How about two twice a year? You're probably learning about today's event through our website msxgroup.com and I want to just call your attention to twice a year we have our user forums so in next month month of March we have two full days of free product training we have approximately eight hours worth like day one dealing with the Microsoft stack and then day two dealing with Prospero so great way to see maybe beginning and intermediate little topics from nuts and bolts of how you might consume it as an end user or if maybe you're in the accounting area, how you might set up and maintain the system. So please look for upcoming calendar events there and usually email our people that have opted in and give them a little heads up that that's upcoming here on March 21st and 22nd to personally invite you to. All right, now as I transition into Prospero, I usually like to talk about two different people in your organization. How about one is those power users in the finance and accounting area, or secondly, maybe one of my managers in the field, or it could be my CFO, board of director member, maybe more of a recipient or end user, I'll call them. I'm even gonna start with that second type of user. And whenever I launch Prospero, even as I take one step back about how you might wanna deploy or open up Prospero, we have flexibility. A lot of our customers say, hey, you only have one way to deploy it, but we give you flexibility a couple of different ways, meaning you could install it on your servers, or secondly, a lot of our customer base is maybe going to a third party to outsource their IT or hosting their gen ledger or their servers. And then the third way is we even host the Prosper application for a large majority of our customers. So you have the flexibility to again, install or deploy it in any of those little methods I just described, including we have either a nice little client server application, but Everybody this day and age says, hey, do you have a web or cloud-based version? And yes, by all means, we do. And we're actually looking at that, but it looks the same regarding if it's on your servers, third party, or hosted or not. It has the same look and feel. Now, what I'm going to continue role-playing with is, let's say I'm an end user in your organization. How about you are my boss in the finance and accounting area? And every month, I see two reports. And when I log into Prospero, I have a nice quick launch of favorites, like this heading reports and charts. Here's report one to the left that you give me access to in actual versus budget. Or to the right, you also provide me a nice rolling 12 month this year, last year comparison of my data. Or secondly, and a shortcut here you see for input, maybe I also do budget input for let's say department A that Derek is in charge of. And it might be that time of year we want me to do a budget or forecast update, but I'll get to secondly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this financial report. And I'm going to take a moment to acquaint you with our demonstration databases structure. We actually have multiple company, but this end user has only access to company one. But I'll show you here in just a few minutes from now, when I log in as the power user, we have multiple company and they're automatically consolidated through an automatic tree, which you has to, in the past, had to manually create those and maintain. Secondly, as I continue downward, we also have locations, similar type of story. This one end user only has access to the Denver location, but we have 10 or 12 locations. But this is what we call security assignments, easy to provide that access to them. And third and finally, here's department. And let's show you two different ways you can consume 
your segments or dimensions, like department is one of those. Here's a the list of my departments, like department one, two, three, four. I could open up with those individually, but notice here at the very bottom, we have also a summary unit. I'm even going to show you that graphically here. So this little button called Use a Selection Tree. And then here's just another visual, and maybe me repeat a key concept or two. This tree called All, it's automatically created and maintained. In some of the old Microsoft products, you always have to manually create and maintain those or most of our competition. But that's a huge win to do, quote unquote, that automatic consolidation of the data. Now I'm going to show you a second or third example of trees, but there's the first one on department that for my single Denver location, I see all departments that I'm gonna normally look at my profit and loss last month by. Now, let me set the stage of maybe the next three or four minutes I'm gonna take you to. And I'm going to quote unquote, interact with the report. One is I'm gonna drill down and secondly, change the drill order, which is an awesome feature I love as an analyst of the information. Secondly, I'm gonna display this data as a chart. Maybe third, when I drill into maybe a single revenue account, I'll maybe secondly go to expense account. I'll look at those individually, but here's where I can see all my account detail in one screen. If I wanted to go between department A, B, C, I simply change my report prompt. There might be ability where you see these little blue buttons where I want to add financial footnotes or annotations like explaining a variance to you, my boss. And then finally, I'm going to be exporting that data, maybe to share it with somebody else or do some ad hoc analysis with that data on my own. All right, let me now go back through each of those couple of bullet points here. Really just the power and ease of the application that stands us apart from the rest. So this sales I'm drilling in, remember I was in a single company, US, single location, Denver, all looking at all my departments. Now when I drill into sales, I see then here's department A, B, C of data. Now here's the tab to the left I began with. And then when I drilled into sales, there is what we call the account level detail. And I even can go one last third level to even the transaction level. I just drilled in, in this third tab to the right. These are all the different transactions. I normally would see vendor or customer information that we've hidden in this demonstration purpose, but at my fingertips, I have all that detail, meaning I do not have to be a general ledger user. I just have to be a Prospero user. If I'm not a Prospero license user, I'll show you other ways you can give them this same report in Excel PDF. But most of our clients, and we recommend being a licensed user because you have all the advantages of the drill down, transactions, annotations, graphing I led into. You'll have some of that in Excel, but not as much. And also this is secure real-time data. Sarbanes, Oxley, we've always been preaching all the Microsoft and MSX group years. Now, when I close out the transaction detail, this was my account level detail. Now, another thing that might be applied or expected was when I drilled in, I drilled across all the columns, meaning actual prior year budget, including variances, because most other products I work with or our competition, you drill in just to a single cell like this actual only. You cannot see it across. I hate that because I can't do a quick little drill down analysis of where my problem area is. I, I see tons and tons of data I can't sift or filter through. All right, let me close that out. That was me looking at the drill order. Now I want to do the same type of thing looking at that drill down, but I'm going to do so through the eyes of my CFO who has access to multi-company and multi-department. I'll show you the same type of thing I just quoted by this button called reopen report because I'm going to go to a single department a little bit later, but I just want to emphasize again. Now here is an example of the companies. My end user only had access to US, but now as a CFO, I have access to all companies. Same story, this tree called all automatically created and maintained. Now this elimination example, we sometimes have separate little webinars devoted to non-general ledger data. Maybe these eliminations I store in Excel and I just want to load that to the database. Or maybe this is a new company I just acquired that I don't want to go through a full-blown conversion to bring and consolidate the figures. So I just gave you two of maybe three or four examples of real-world Prospero use cases where we automated these additional companies. I'll save for that for a different day and story there, maybe a one-on-one -on -one demonstration. Now here, 
I'm really leading up to my favorite feature in most of our customers, my ability to change the drill order on the fly. Well, first of all, I usually predefine a drill order because now sales, when I drill in as a CFO, my first click or layer is by company from biggest to smallest. So there's US and Europe. Now the end user only had US, so I'm gonna go now my second click. Here's my second click is the location, meaning Miami, San Francisco, Denver. The other user only came into this level, meaning after US only, only Denver. I could continue going downward, but I'm gonna close out those windows here. Now I do not have to go to a second, third or fourth report, which was your old Microsoft and most of our competition story. Nope, I can stay in the same report. I'm gonna come up here and change the drill order. From top down, I just demonstrated company first, location second, I could have gone further down, but I'm gonna simply drag department to the top because maybe I saw which company on that last illustration was my culprit, but I wanna see maybe what department or product or customer maybe was the issue. The sales, I'm now gonna drill in. So instead of my third layer deep of department, now this is my first layer deep. And I can immediately see, oops, there's a large variance in this marketing, department 300. And now what I'm gonna do is turn my attention to it. So I'm simply gonna reopen the report. Now, as a power user, I see some of these runtime settings. Ignore those, that's really just the date I might change or maybe the output I'll get to in just a second. But my end user here at the very top only had this selection. So I'm really just gonna type or choose department 300 because I quickly saw without having to hunt and sift through 10, 20 different layers of the report, I saw that was the problem area. And now I'm going to turn my attention and looking at just that more lower or micro level. So there's the heading, just marketing, and then some of the variances I was just calling out, but I'm now looking at the entire P&L. And then usually I'd like to wrap up with what I just showed that is here in the toolbar, the ability to change and also predefine the drill order on the fly. Awesome, awesome feature. No other product has it so nimbly and powerfully as Prospero does. All right, let me close that out. I'm gonna go back to my end user and let's go through a few other more interacting and ease of consumption of the data. I'm gonna to continue to the left to the right. Now here is this button here called display as a chart. And let me even just show you one other example I just opened up ahead of time. How about my CFO likes to see every morning a little dashboard. There's maybe two reports to the left, maybe two graphs to the right. I'm actually gonna open one of those up and expand it further, but there's what we simply call a report collection, meaning multiple reports I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna show you a second flavor of that, maybe in Excel and PDF, meaning what you probably are manually doing today, running and accumulating multiple reports to Excel, PDF, we can automate that process. Okay, so hold that thought and word called report collections. I'll get it to it a little bit later but let me now focus my attention on graphing. Now this end user I just returned to, when I come up here and display as a chart, we have about 10 different chart types out of the box. And it looks like maybe someone last set that as a bar graph. And this is a quick margin analysis. So how about here my profitability, 7.5 actual, maybe prior year, this percent, budgeted five, and this is also an interactive drill downable chart. So here, this revenue, I'm just gonna drill in. And then there's the next layer, meaning here's my different departments. I have a bunch of little cool little toolbar icons here on the options tab and layout, but I'll save that for later. But I'll at least call your attention to, I can do a lot of further interaction with this chart. But the key thing here is me maybe just keeping it high level, drilling in. Now graphs are pretty cool, but I'm actually gonna come back and now that I drilled into that revenue, I'm gonna do the reverse, meaning I started with the report and I went to the graph and then I drilled into the graph. But now after I drilled into the graph, I'm gonna take this little layer and I'm gonna switch back to the report view. So here, as the heading applies, I drilled into my net revenue. Here's when I drilled into my different departments like that first or second layer down. And how about, let's now export this to Excel. Any file name and path, I'll just keep the default. And I'm gonna now show you two or three examples of maybe other ways you can consume and look at the financial data and be maybe a non-licensed user. So here's example one, meaning an Excel sheet I just exported out that I drilled into, meaning one report, income statement, 
and just one sheet. I sort of call that a two-dimensional report. Now, my second example I ran ahead of time to save time is an income statement, but I have it ran for multiple locations. And I think I might have accidentally closed it on a prior phone call. Let me open it back up here. All right, so this might be one single report, meaning income statement, where here this is location Miami for Department A, or here is Miami Department B, San Francisco Department A, B, et cetera. I even can include the account level detail as well. All right, this is one report income statement by maybe my different responsibility centers like location departments. And third and final Excel example is multiple reports, meaning report collection. How about my end goal is, hey, every single month I've been manually producing to my banker or board member package. Now here's how you can automate that in Prospero. This is simply, again, a report collection. Here's three reports, income statement, or second report balance sheet, or third report cash flow that I simply output to one Excel file. And let me just show you briefly for those people that are licensed user currently in Prospero. I'm logged in as the power user, and I'm just simply coming here to the report collection area. And we saw two examples. Here is the CFO, what I called the dashboard of a couple of reports and graphs. And then here might be month end. So there's maybe report one, two, three, four, five. I just click on the add or remove button. And then last little thing here is, yeah, we looked at the workspace. And then I just showed you Excel, those multiple reports. Now, finally, let me just show you PDF because a lot of people are still manually printing reports out, which I say, don't do that. Save your cost in a tree. However, let me just show you one other example here in a PDF file. So here might be page or report number one. But then if I scroll down, there's page or report number two, page or report number three, et cetera, et cetera. And that's maybe a final example I'll do in a report collection. And as I recap, there's report collection in a workspace, or secondly, we saw these three reports in Excel, or finally, PDF. All right, awesome. Bring the easy button to your process that you're probably manually doing now. All right, I see a couple questions came in. I actually answered two of them here. I'm just gonna pause just for a second, just see if any other questions came in through the queue so far, and I'll probably field it more casually in some other features I see two other questions that came in. I'm going to get to those in just a minute. So bear with me. I'm going to probably follow up with you individually, those that did submit the questions here. So thank you for submitting that. As I continue, I drilled into sales first of all, but let me just randomly drill into bonus. And I'm going to call that account number two. I did account number one earlier, revenue. But here's a nice little button here, full account detail. I get a little warning saying, hey, this might take a little longer. Yes, I'm going to continue, but now what I'm going to see is all on one page. I'm just going to scroll down. I'll see all my different accounts on one screen without having to go to separate ones, which again is the story of most other our competition. But there's my sales. There's my returns. Here's my cost of goods sold, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Awesome. I'll gloss over a couple of these, but there is the full account detail, multiple accounts all on one screen change the report prompt I did earlier. That is really maybe me just going between department A, B, C, but now as the end user, I don't have all the other fluff, meaning report date and output that my end user did. So I could change to different ones, which I'll just continue at least calling that window out. Next button to the right. How about you, my boss, have asked us the managers to explain variances. So here in blue is where I did so. And maybe I'm going to come up here and just pick on this bonus here. Actual, right click, annotate, and notice to the left the toolbar icon up above I began with. And I'll say, hey, thanks for joining today. And then how about here is my own bonus here. Derek's bonus here. Did so good in this little overview. And let me go ahead and click OK. That way you or somebody else reviewing it, you can hover on top of it to see the memoir note, or better yet, I'm going to call out this window to the right that many times I minimize to not block my viewing. And then I'm going to use this little thumbtack to not auto hide it and dock it. 
So I'm logged in as a generic user called Manager1, but here is Derek Krebs on this day and time. Add this memoir note. I can come up here, add, modify, and delete, and maybe the add button. This might be Derek's boss. And this is our game plan for how we're going to take advantage of that opportunity or threat. Okay, and then if I click OK, you're going to have all that nice little dialogue and maybe user one, two, all self-contained, meaning I don't have to hunt down emails or separate documents or files. It's all contained within what we call this publish report area. And publish report, just a fancy word for, hey, now that I've done my month and close, there's sort of a final copy of the report that I can then archive and annotate on. And I'll probably make a few other remarks to it later, but publish reports, keyword. All right, I'm about done. We were just looking at some of those exports to Excel PDF or printer. And I believe I've now finished up the nice little overview of sort of interacting with at least my report. But let me transition just to a moment to the budget side. I'm even going to take one step back because I opened up maybe this report one. I did not show you the nice rolling 12-month trainer prior year. But how about it's that time of the year you want me to update this budget? And another visual for that is, hey, here's this budget column. And I'm going to update that if I have access to or if that's time of year for my budget season, I call it. And I'm going to come back on this screen here, open input, and I could open up 20 or 30 different departments. I'm not going to do that to bore you here, but what I wanted to do at least and emphasize is the rows, columns, and trees earlier. Now here's one example. I'm going to open up an administration. I'll call that department A. I'm then going to open up a second department, which has expenses only. Okay, so here's Department 100 for administration, expenses only. Let me come up here in this button called Reopen Input. Again, this is my budget entry screen. I'm now going to open up a second budget screen for Department B. Once again, this is expenses only, and it has the same look and feel, meaning expenses, and sometimes I'll hide and only show those accounts that have balances, so I'm not seeing a bunch of clutter that does not pertain to my department. Now, third and finally, because that might be one row format or line set. I might have 100 of these departments to open up. But finally, I'm going to pull up a different department that has sales and cost of goods sold. And it's simply just a second line set I'm utilizing. We call that an override, meaning, hey, maybe for my sales and cost of goods sold departments or locations, they're using maybe a different line set or row definition. Now, speaking of this window, there's maybe two or three thoughts I'm going to elaborate on further. One would be the powerful data warehouse, non-general ledger data. Here's maybe three examples. Product 10 motors, product 20 compressors, those are not in our general ledger, but I can still budget and record actuals to those. Second example, units sold, sales price, same story. These statistics are not in the general ledger, but hey, great. Possibilities are endless of what I can do inside Prospero. Now, third example, I'm going to go back to my first budgeted department, one of the largest costs of organizations. These gray lines, that's just the color I like to use to indicate stuff you do not enter into versus these rows in white, like this $1,000 I'm going to change to $2,000. But these gray items like salaries, the related headcount hours and full-time equivalencies, including Taxes, like payroll tax, health insurance, workers' comp, you name it, those are all great and locked from input because I, as an administrator, like you and your power, I'm the CFO, IG will come up here, let's say for MSX Group, I'm going to load the 110 people of our organization into this system, maybe once a year, a quarter, or month, I'm going to load that from my payroll system. does not matter what payroll system you're in, and then here, I'm just reflecting on hundreds of companies' budgets I've done with over the years, and I like to paraphrase it saying three common ways I might want to budget salaries. The first two might be by name, like Bob or Sally, or second, it might be by position, like I need this many support reps, I need this many truck drivers, and how about what I'm going to do is say I'll need 5.5 .5 of those support people making this average hourly rate, and the third and final way after by name or by position is statistically based. Like on this screen where I have like units and price, maybe I have position one, 
like senior engineer at this average rate or position two production worker level two at this average rate. So it might be more statistically based on maybe revenue levels, what I call sort of a variable driver-based modeling. Okay, we'll get to a different story, but maybe those prospective customers, let's let us do that free trial version and show you the capabilities of such. I'm gonna continue with this one budget screen, meaning human resources, and probably time won't allow me to go through all the extra bells and whistles, but I can have this be as simple as I want or as granular as I want. A couple of those little bullet points are, we have either salary or hourly people, and this button here, I'm showing people mixed, meaning salary and hourly. But if I wanted to show everybody hourly based, easily converts that to the same sort of denominator or full-time equivalency. As here is maybe I added maybe a couple support reps where I probably should have keyed in like 6,500 hours here. I probably should have done when I was on the hourly screen. Okay. Now further to the right, I have bonuses, pay raises when they start and end. Like this position or person starts in period six. This person maybe is being terminated this position and even I can blow this out by month because maybe I want to see in retail, maybe my summer months or winter months are higher and lower. So that is some extra granularity we could do, but I'm not displaying broken out by month. And pay raises to the right, like on this line here, bonuses, overtime, as I'll just maybe summarize a few of these other columns here, bonus by either percent, or dollar amount, maybe specific periods. If it's blank, bonus accrued. And then finally, I'm dealing, thinking about maybe some multinational customers we have in ours worldwide or multi-state ones. I actually live here in California, but in MSX Group, we have employees in multiple different states. So whenever Derek gets loaded, Derek might be loaded to Department A Consulting, but Derek might have a California tag and maybe a family next to his name. And long story short, I can add a lot more columns based on different benefit assumptions I want. And I identify these codes and choices. And there's just one simple table behind the scenes that says, hey, for California, it might be 5% at 5,000 limit. Or for New York, 6% at 6,000 limit. Super easy table. Now, I'll be glad to show you that table in some of our future demonstrations. But most other product demonstrations I attend or have seen our customers, they won't show you behind the scenes. So I feel sorry that they don't show you the complexity of ours, but the simplicity of Prospero. And I'm gonna go now full circle back. There is now all my salary, full-time equivalency rolled up, taxes, and even EC payroll tax, it started high and tapered off because I have a simple table where I define the limit once it reached. I don't, there's no formulas in the system versus in a lot of our competition, there's hundreds and thousands of formulas they have hidden Excel you still need, but. That's not the story of Prospero. That's another differentiator. All right, let me wrap up with a few other little, what I call bells and whistles in the budget screen. And then I'm gonna wrap up with showing you some administrative capability behind the scenes. Like how do I create this item? Now for the budget screen and on the toolbar, here's an account like advertising. How about I'm budgeting now in my marketing department, this general ledger account 7350, I can come up here and expand the line item. And you see here in green, another account. And then if I come up here and right click, I can insert. And then I can then further explain why in detail amounts of why Derek's budgeting for maybe this larger ticket item. And that's great for what I call on the fly that an end user, you can insert these line items at free will. But there's many times me as a CFO, I like to think and plan ahead regarding how I want them to model. Like here's the screen I'm gonna circle back to because I want users maybe to insert what I'll call units and price and cost. And that's what I call more of a fixed structure, driver-based modeling, okay? But there's maybe reasons why you might do one versus the other and control the process being another theme that I'm always fond of. A lot of times Excel does not give you that type of control or comp competition. Now, when I change that $1,000 to $2,000, there is great audit trail history. I could probably show you two or three examples, but I'll show you one of it. Now, here is this one account that I probably picked on a lot over time, meaning here's account 6260. And then here's Derek on this date and time, change it from X dollar to Y dollar. And then here's my name, 
Here's the date and amount from and to. Instead of looking at a single account 6260, I could also look at multiple accounts, even multiple departments. Okay, but I'll save that for a later demonstration, but great audit trail history of who made changes to what inside the system. All right, as I continue, that was some of our detail screens like HR, revenue, cost of goods sold, line item detail. Let's now look at capital. This is what I'm going to call our new capital acquisitions for my budget. So Derek, maybe in IT, needs 20 thousandths of computer or maybe in period six, some additional items. And then here's a purpose built tab called capital. And then here was maybe the tablets. Like here is five tablets costing $2,000 each, meaning a total capital new purchase of $10,000 on budgeting maybe in January or right about April. I even could put little financial annotations and here to the right, I'm just gonna click on this button called annotation column. And then here you see to the right, here's my little note, who like Derek and when added that. This is the capital screen. So if I then detail out my new capital purchases, I'll now go full circle. There's my new capital, including depreciation on that. And then eventually I could pull up a balance sheet and cash flow screen that maybe the CFO only touches and it's more central, meaning not by all these location departments. And we have separate sessions on balance sheet and cash flow budgeting, but definitely our ability for and me seeing more and more companies doing so. And how about on that same annotations note, this on the toolbar, I'm just doing so on my main screen so I can quickly review people's budget without having to look at each individual line item. I can quickly see a nice little glimpse behind that. And if I were then come up back to my report where I began with, I'm gonna go full circle now. I could just come up here and refresh the report, meaning I don't have to export this and import it in my general ledger. This is all self-contained within the data warehouse. The actuals, the budget I just entered, and maybe even some non-general ledger data we spoke of, maybe three or four examples. So awesome. Okay, cool. There is more of the interaction of the report and budget. Now let's take a few minutes and look behind the scenes that we're always transparent and show you. Let's now talk about one of the pain points I led in with to start the call. That is, I'm gonna log back in as my power user in finance and accounting. Now, a couple of notes here too is the great reusable rows, columns, and trees. I'm gonna come here on the home ribbon. This button here called catalog view. I just wanna show you great inventory of all items inside the system and the reusable rows, columns, and trees that all of our Excel add-in competition does not have. And I despise the inability for such. Now here's an example of who created it, who last modified it, when it was last used, who last published report, great. I could maybe focus my attention on the line sets or the columns, but I'm gonna go back to the reports and maybe the last little thing I'll do in this window is, I'm gonna sort by clicking on this heading, I'm gonna sort all my reports by the line set being used. So here's that great example. And that PowerPoint slide, I have just one row definition. I see used for all these reports. So if management wants me to make a change structurally to it, I just do so in one spot, meaning I don't have to open up 10, 20 different Excel files and reports. Another differentiator of Prospero. All right, let me cancel that out. Another bullet point I wanna show you transparently was when I showed you some graphing ability, there's no bells and whistles I did. All I did was I turned on a little check mark saying, hey, I want it to output to the graph, pie graph, or maybe a column or a line, et cetera. Now behind the scenes for report, like here's the line and column being used. I just wanna show you the chart tab. All I had to do is turn on this little check marks to allow a chart. And then I see maybe about 10 different chart types. Other people's story are, oh, you have to be an Excel guru and be a master of graphs, which I think I'm a great Excel person, but I still stumble and fumble on graphs. Or other people's story, which is not Prospero's, is, oh, you have to buy this other license for Power BI. You have to know all the technical tables. No. All you have to do is turn on the checkbox and choose your graph type. Or if you don't like this easy graphing we do, just send it out to Excel. But most people just use an inherent graphing inside the system. I'm just showing you the Excel that 
is maybe an option if you have very robust needs, which most do not, but another way to get to your end goal. Continuing with pain point and Prospero fix to that is whenever you add a new general ledger account, especially in the FRX and manager portal world, I'll maybe use as a nice correlation and maybe Microsoft forecasting budgeting. You just go to all the different rows and two different systems to maintain it. But in Prospero, usually no maintenance at all. I'm going to show you another feature. I'm going to show a hidden column. It's not the most glamorous first example, but I'm showing the account number yay or nay. Or a second example is maybe this is a quarter column or year to date, and maybe I want to show the individual months to maybe have it be abbreviated, but expand to see the detail. But in the old FRX and manager portal world, you'd have to have multiple different reports and columns for hiding or showing, just like lines I also could do. So I'm just sort of expanding and collapsing that. Now, the key thing is we're going to look back at trees, but instead of trees on company or tree on department, which we saw those two, we're now going to look at tree on our account segment. Now, these names, I can name anything I want. I name it cost of goods sold, or I name it GRPF for gross profit, or I name it EXPN for expenses. Any name or ID you can use. Now, I'm going to take you to the line set since I'm a power user in the finance and accounting area, or I could go to the column. Well, let's go to the line set for maybe this introduction, time permitting. Now, I could do things the old-fashioned way, ranges and wild cards up here, meaning all individual accounts, like an income statement detail, but the expenses line, as even I'm going to come back here and right-click to tile vertically these two reports, yeah, there's all my expenses, but above this row, I'm showing all the detail. And then I'm just going to come up here and not show those side by side. So I'm going to expand this a little bit further. And simply, I'm just using what's called a summary account. I'm expanding above, and zero means show all individual detail or accounts. Let's look at that tree in two ways. Here is where a similar window I showed earlier on department, but this is now our account segment, a graphical view, which I'm going to come right back to, but I'm going to come to a numeric view. So here's account. 7,000, 8,000, whatever. Here's all my numeric accounts. We read directly from your general ledger. Prospero interfaces with about a 30 plus different accounting packages and versions of. And then I may go back to the tree. There's my expenses. And a lot of times I'm able to use ranges or wildcards if my chart of accounts numbered nicely, but sometimes it's not. So sometimes I'll have some scattergory accounts. So here's sometimes what I call scattergory accounts versus here's a good clean range. Or here's a good clean range. But the key thing I'll wrap up with, and I'm going to show you another glimpse of this tree behind the scenes, is if I add a new general ledger account to the system, Prospero is automatically integrated. This tree, since I'm using a range or wildcard, I do not have to update it, nor I do not have to update this line set, which we saw earlier was used for tons of different reports and budget templates. So there's the easy button we're bringing to the process. Let me show you a couple of things behind the scenes on that because there's great checks and balances we built inside the tool that most of our competition does not have. And then here I'm under trees. Let's continue with our natural account. Most organizations only need one tree, but maybe we have a second tree because in our cash flow budget, there might be depreciation and bonus I group differently. So that's maybe an example of maybe why I might want a secondary account tree if I roll accounts up differently for a different purpose like my cash flow budgeting. But let me expand a couple of these rows here. Now, two or three great things, checks and balances that are not in most other competition differentiator is I'm going to right click on top of the summary account, like total expenses. I want to see where I'm using that in a system. As I expand upon that, great. I'm using that all these different line sets, which you use for both reports and budgets. So if I change my mind, like, oops, maybe management says this one account, labor, I'm going to drag and drop up here. I'll maybe move this second account. I did individual accounts, but I'm going to do multiple. Just drag and drop. Okay. Another great thing is, how about this account 7850? I'm going to right-click and delete it, and I'm going to come up here, either insert individual accounts or better yet, ranges, but I'm going to insert an account, and I can quickly find orphans. So here is all the accounts that have a seven prefix that are orphans that are not in the tree. There's the guy I deleted. 
there's other great checks and balances of what we call missing accounts. And how about finally, I'll just add that back. I'm going to come up here like this range you see here. I'm going to do the same thing. I mean, I'm going to right click and add a range. I'll just say test or demo. And then I'm going to do a range of one of two ways, maybe 7,000 through account 7999. Now, if I had to come up here and click OK, there's other great checks and balances system built in the tool set. Oops, you can't do that because you'd be duplicating accounts. A lot of the other systems I work with allow you those duplicates in human error that we are catching ahead of time. Or I could also use wildcard. I'm lazy. I don't want to type 7,000 I'm just going to do seven wildcard, same type of story. And maybe I'm going to exclude an account because maybe this is a training line that's on a different little group of my profit and loss. But usually I might have me about 10, 20 different little subgroups based on salaries and wages, cash receivable. But usually this one master tree dictates all the consistency and avoiding maintenance of your reports, which I'm going to right click where use once again, just to emphasize again, hey, this summary account I'm using for ton of reports. All right, cool, great. A little bit further on the line set. All right, I'm going to see if there's any questions that came through the queue. I have maybe about five minutes remaining. All right, I see one question on security, so let me share that briefly. First of all, let me do so through the eyes of our end user. On this quick launch, they only had access or visibility to two reports, but I have about 50 in our demonstration database, even a lot you can use in your environment. Secondly, they only had visibility to this one budget, but I might have a best case, worst case they do not see. Okay, that is what we call visibility of which reports they see. Secondly, whenever I opened up this report, we had what are called assignments. Like this person had only access to company one or just the Denver location. And I'm going to now take you to our user-friendly security. And this product created by accountants for accountants, meaning little or no IT involvement. We love IT, but we don't need them. And let me now do the same type of thing. As a power user, me and finance accounting, security users. Well, we can use your Windows security, which IT loves hearing, meaning you do not have to create separate user IDs and passwords. In our web cloud version, you can use what's called single sign-on. Again, IT, those are buzzwords that, okay, great. That means it's going to be more secure. We're just going to use our internal security and just pass it on through to Prospero. Now, I'm actually using a fictitious test user since I'm not truly on my network here. But let's take a look at this manager, manager one user. And one key thing I called out that I'll show you is this button here called Assignments. I can click on the Insert button. But here in the top row, I'll focus on. Well, here, I'm just giving access to company one. Otherwise, the asterisk below is just a wild card for all companies, which alternatively, I could have chosen that default tree member called all. Or secondly, this person only had access to one Denver location. And then here might be two different trees. I'll call this, again, I'm on my location segment. I'm going to call this tree number one by division. Because here is... Miami or San Francisco in two different spots, meaning we have sales and service, meaning this is what I call my functional tree for San Francisco in two different spots, but I'm going to go to a locational tree. So here's my regional tree, and then here might be West, or even better yet, wildcard if you have good clean chart of accounts. So any Midwest might be with a four. So if I add new Midwest locations, I do not have to update this tree, and let me go full circle. How about this is Bob, he's our Midwest manager, and instead of that one single location, I just gave him access to all of Midwest through what we call that summary level. All right, so usually we just have a couple of lines based on user security, either individual location departments or usually summary level. And the last thing too I quoted on security side was visibility, meaning this is a balance sheet I'm not showing that my end user does not have access to. But I'm on this income statement, this button here called visibility, where I simply come up here and say maybe all users can see it. Or if not everybody, I turn it off and I get more granular. And what I'm just showing you here is if everybody does not see the report, 
It could be at the role level because here might be my regional controllers group or even down to the individual user. So you get very granular if need to, but usually it's larger at everybody or at the role or group level. All right, and literally within two or three minutes, that is all that's entailed with security, those assignments and visibility. Super easy in that regard. All right, I'm going to probably finish up the last couple of minutes with some nice little thank you and takeaways. And I see a couple of people that might have joined a tad late, so I'll just repeat a couple of things for those that did. One is, again, you've been listening to Derek Krebs. I'm the senior consultant at MSX Group. I'll be sure to pass along this recording for those people that register or attended. Secondly, this PowerPoint that I use for a guide of some of our notes and differentiators and new features, including the product. And my personal invite, maybe two things, uh, maybe a nice little one-on-one -on -one demonstration since we had a large audience from different companies attend, but we'll maybe just do some one-on-one -on -one Q&A with you and even maybe using your own data reports and converting that. So I want to thank you one and all for joining. So have a good rest of your day and we'll talk soon through email. Thank you very much.